Okay, so even if you forgot all the basic algebra that you may have learned, you should still be able to do this if you remember how to deal with fractions. And hopefully you, uh, most of you out there remember your fraction skills. And as such, I believe most of you should be able to solve this problem. Let's go ahead and take a look at the problem here. We have negative 4xy divided by z. All this divided by 8xy divided by 3z. We're looking to simplify this expression. And of course, if you, uh, you know, if some of you are already, you know, uh, excellent in algebra, this should be a very easy problem. Uh, but a lot of you out there, you know, again, may have forgot algebra, or maybe you don't even know algebra. If you keep your fraction skills in mind, I think you could get through this problem pretty successfully. Matter of fact, if you want to try it, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the right answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to simplify this variable expression. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so if uh, I'm going to show you the answer here in a second, but some of you might have picked up on what I call this. This is a variable expression. So we have some variables here and all this stuff is trying to express something in mathematics, uh, in algebra and just in math in general. We always try to simplify uh, an expression into its most basic form. And let's go ahead and take a look at that answer right now. And the correct answer is negative 3 over 2. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, that's very good. Matter of fact, definitely cause for celebration to give you a happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you still are a certified professional expert when it comes to simplifying variable expressions. They really won't know what you're talking about, but they might say, you know what, I'm going to take you out to dinner because, you know, I think one day you're going to do something extra big. You might even make a lot of money. Who knows? All right. But uh, those of you out there that are lost, you won't be lost for long because this is not that difficult. And again, it's going to require a review of some basic fraction skills. Okay. So here is our problem. And as I indicated, you need to understand uh, how to work with fractions before, well, how to work with uh, numeric fractions, okay, before you can uh, move on to algebraic fractions. Now, in algebra, we don't really um, describe things like this as uh, algebraic fractions per se. Technically, we would call something like this rational expressions. Now, I bring that up because some of you might want to learn algebra or need assistance in this type of problem. So what you're going to be studying is a simplifying rational expressions. Anytime in mathematics you hear this word rational, okay, more or less you want to be thinking of the word fraction, okay, and rational uh, expressions, rational equations are basically equations more or less uh, that involve um, that are, are uh, fractions with variables. Now there's a little bit more to it than that, but if you remember that, I think uh, that'd be um, you know uh, a good start. Okay. So what are the skills that we need to understand? Well, you need to know how to reduce a fraction or simplify a fraction and how to divide fractions. Let's quickly review these skills and then um, with basic numbers. And if we can remember how we do this, then we can apply that to this problem and you'll see that this is not that difficult. All right, so let's uh, talk about how to reduce a fraction. So a little pop quiz uh, here for you. So I have uh, four over 20 and 75 uh, over 100. Now, if I asked you to simplify or reduce these fractions, could you write equivalent fractions that are you know, uh, simpler than these respective fractions? The process of doing something like that is called reducing. Okay, again, in mathematics, we want to write things as simple as possible and just to kind of really you know, drive this point home. Would you give your, um, let's suppose on a test, would you give your teacher uh, this um, as an answer, okay, 5,000 
over 10,000. Uh, now, some of you might say, yeah, I would, I would do that because I would just want to make my teacher upset and be like, you know, hey, well, no, your teacher's not going to like this. It's going to say, hey, just write one half, okay? Don't write all this big number. Just write the most simplest form of that number, okay? So simplifying or reducing is not really optional, okay, in terms of mathematics. It's kind of like, you know, required. So anytime you're dealing with fractions or anything in math, you always want to think, have I written my answer in its simplest form? Okay, so that's really, really important. Let's go and take a look at the answers here because I know most of you already, you know, figured this out. So the answers are the following. Okay, so for uh, 4 over 20, the correct answer is 1 fifth and 75 over 100. The correct answer is three-fourths. And I know most of you are like, yes, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is so easy. Move on to the good stuff. Well, we need to really make sure you understand, you know, how you went from here to here, okay, and from here to here. Now, if I asked you to explain or tutor someone or to give a formal class on how to reduce or simplify a uh, fraction, some of you might be like, well, I just kind of know that this, you know, this goes into this this many times. I think most of you have the right idea, but we really want to kind of define what's going on because this is going to help us solve this algebraic uh, problem that we have. Okay. So what you're really doing when we have like four over 20, for example, is in your brain, you're looking for common factors. We're looking for uh, a factor is when we have a number, let's say like four, we're thinking of two or more numbers such that when we multiply them together, we can get back to four. So of course, one times four is four, so one and four would be factors of four. Two times two um, is four, so two is factors of four. And for 20, we have all sorts of factors, two and 10, or five times four. So what you're trying to do, the name of the game, if you will, is to uh, take the numbers that you have in your numerator and denominator and break them up in factors, and you're looking to um, break them up in such a way where we can have or, or try to um, find common factors that, that are in the numerator and denominator. So for example, four, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna think of four as one times four, not two times two, just one times four. Now I could have used two as well, because two times 10, but let's just kind of play through my example here. So 20, you might be saying, oh, that's five times four. Now that's a good way to factor these respective numbers because four and four show up you know, four shows up in the numerator and denominator as a factor. So when you have common factors, you can literally just cross cancel these things just like that. Now I could have done this with uh, uh, two and, um, and 10, right? Like two times 10 and then four would be two times two and I would have cross cancel two, but guess what? I would have to continue to factor because two uh, and 10, I could factor 10 as two times five. So I would have to factor again. Right, so you want to look for opportunities to find the biggest common factor. Now, of course, this is a skill, but that's what's going on. And when you cross cancel these uh, like factors, what remains is the simplified equivalent version of that fraction. All right, let's go to take a look at the same idea with 75 over 100. So 75, I'm, again, I'm thinking of numbers that go into 75 and 100. Or, uh, you know, basically I'm looking for factors, but 75, I'm like, yeah, 3 times 25 is 75, and 100 is 4 times 25. Oh, look, and I have like factors. I could cross cancel these, and there you go. Here is my simplified um, reduced uh, fraction. Okay, so simplifying fractions or simplifying rational expressions in algebra uses the exact same concept, okay? We want to look for uh, like factors in the numerator and denominator, so keep that in mind. Now let's go ahead and talk about the second thing that we got to um, know, and that is how to divide fractions. Now hopefully um, most of you out there are up to speed on this. Now some of you might be like, oh man, I just need some basic review on fractions and just basic math in general. Well, you're in luck. I have a fantastic uh, mini course. It's like a little mini uh, boot camp. It's uh, three chapters, okay? And I didn't make the course three chapters, but let me tell you what's in that course real quick. It's called my Math Foundations course. It's a uh, uh, link, oh, well, the link, you'll find the link to the course, excuse me, in the description of the video, but you'll find how to do fractions, order of operations, percent, uh, decimals, all that kind of good stuff. I call it my math boot camp because it's it's three chapters, and it kind of reminds me of when I went through Marine Corps recruit training uh, back in the good old days. 
uh, that was three months, and I came in uh, uh, into the Marine Corps as one person, and I left as an entirely different person in three months. In three simple chapters, you too can become a mathematics Marine, if you will. All right, but you got to get the basics down because if you don't get the basics down, you're going to have a tough time in more advanced math like algebra. All right, so again, those are some uh, suggestions for those of you that are struggle with the, struggling with the basics. Okay, when we want to divide fractions, like two-thirds divided by one-fourth, what we want to do is change the problem from division to multiplication. Okay, now how do we do that? Well, we're going to take the fraction to the right of the division symbol right here. Okay, so here, here's the division symbol. Here's the fraction to the right of it. And you're going to flip it upside down. Okay, that's called the reciprocal. So, again, when we're dividing fractions, we're going to take the fraction uh, to the right of the division symbol, flip it upside down, and we're going to go from division to multiplication. So here now is the problem we have to do. So you're like, okay, great. I got a division problem. Now I have a multiplication problem. How do you multiply fractions? Super easy. All we have to do is multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So here this is going to be 2 times 4, which of course will be 8, and then 3 times 1 is 3. So this is 8 uh, thirds. Now at this point, you know, I would uh, before I would actually multiply this, I would be looking for opportunities to, you know, cross cancel any like factors. We don't have any, so this is our final answer. Okay, so this hopefully is uh, kind of giving you clues on what to do uh, to uh, solve our original problem. So let's go and apply all of our knowledge and skills to the actual problem. But before we do this, I want you to apply all your effort and ability just to hit that subscribe button. That's such a small uh, task, uh, but it's like that old saying or, or what that famous saying, when they landed on the moon, one small step for man, but one giant leap for mankind. Well, this is one small step for you, but it's one giant leap for my YouTube channel. Make sure to hit that notification button as well. My objective is to reach as many people as possible. So many people struggle in mathematics. Matter, matter of fact, it's kind of a crisis. Not kind of. It actually is a crisis in uh, our country, in the United States. And unfortunately, in uh, big parts of the world, it doesn't have to be that way. What people need is clear and understandable instruction. They need encouragement. That's what I'm trying to do. So when you do this, it really does help the YouTube algorithm, and it helps grow my classroom. Thank you so much. As a matter of fact, this is the way I look right now. Back to the problem. Okay, so now this particular problem is really a complex fraction. Now, I didn't write it in this way. I'll explain this here in a second. But you want to be able to interpret uh, fraction problems when they're a complex fraction, uh, complex fraction, as written be um, as you can write them this way or this way. You'll see here in a second. So this is one big fraction, right? We have a numerator and a denominator. Then we're dividing it by another fraction. We got a numerator and denominator. These little slashes right here are fraction bars, right? So you can think of this same problem in this manner. Okay, negative four x y over z divided by, this big fraction bar is divided by 8xy divided by th uh, 3z. So typically, like let's say in an algebra course, you very well may see the problem in this manner, but you need to understand that it's the same thing as this. Okay, we are dividing fractions. So this is a fraction being divided by another fraction, and this is what we call a complex fraction. But don't let this intimidate you because you have the skills, right? We already know how to divide a, um, one fraction by another fraction. So let's go ahead and do that now. And I'm going to think about the problem this way, right? So it might have been given the original problem, let's say, in an algebra course, might be given in this manner. But I'm going to go ahead and say, OK, I got my numerator divided by my denominator. So I'm going to write it as the numerator divided by the denominator. So I'm going to write it in this manner. OK, so we have negative 4xy over z divided by 8xy over 3z. Now, just to be super clear here, some of you might be saying, well, what are the factors? How do I understand these variables? Well, uh, negative 4xy, this, this is multiplication. In algebra, when you have variables written next to one another, or let's take this example right here, 8xy, this means right here in algebra, 8 times x times y. Now, you can see why we don't use this like multiplication uh, operator like this, this symbol, 4 times 2, of course, is 8. Um, here, 
if I want to go uh, four um, times X, you wouldn't go four times X like this, right? <laughs> because it would be totally confusing. So the way we want to express or way we do express this in algebra, the language of algebra, is just you write the uh, variable next to the number or two variables next to one another. Uh, that's multiplication. But those are factors, okay? So this is one big product. So these are individual factors, all right? So that's a bit of a clue on what we're going to do. Okay, so here we have a lovely fraction problem, okay? And we're going to use our understanding of fractions. We're gonna do what? We're gonna change this to multiplication and we're gonna flip this thing upside down. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so again, to be successful in algebra, you gotta be successful in the basics. And when you see something like this, just think of, you know, so oftentimes it's good just to write a numeric version of the problem. Be like, okay, how would I handle this if these were numbers? Once you have that in, in mind, then you can kind of, you know, know what to do. So what we're going to do here is go from division to multiplication, and we're going to flip this fraction here upside down, or this uh, rational expression. So the 3z is going to go up here, and the 8xy is going to go down in the denominator. Okay, so now we get to multiply these fractions. And I told you how to multiply fractions. It's very straightforward. All we have to do is multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So when we do that, you're gonna end up with one fraction and uh, the way it would look would be this way. It would be negative uh, uh, x, oh, no, sorry, negative four x, y, three, z. This is all multiplication. Now I'm not, again, writing the multiplication, a uh, multiplication operator. I could, you know, put a little dots in there to make that explicit, but this is all multiplication. Then I have z times eight x, y. Okay, all these are all factors, right? These are all one big products. Now, of course, you can't go into your calculator and multiply x times y. You're not going to get a number. But what we want to do at this stage is look for common factors, okay? So this is where the fun part comes out uh, or comes to, right? We've actually worked all this time to get to this point to simplify this rational expression, okay, this variable expression. So let's go ahead and start identifying them. So uh, I got a Z over here and I have a Z over here. I could cross cancel those Z's, no problem. I have a Y here and a Y here. Those go away. And I have an X here and an X here. Again, you have one um, variable. You have the same factor in the numerator and denominator. So I could just cross cancel one from one. Okay, so what is left? Well, I have negative four times three over eight. Now, some of you could be like, oh, well, four goes into eight. I can just, that'd be uh, two. That's great, but let's suppose you, you know, you're a little bit confused with what's going on, or you know, this is a lot for you. Just take the negative four, what's remaining, right? Negative four times three, that's gonna be negative 12, right? Negative times positive is negative, and then I have my eight down here in my denominator, so now I have negative 12 over eight. Now I can reduce this. Okay, you're like, what am I talking about? How do I reduce this? Again, you're looking for like factors, so this is four times three, right, 12 and uh, eight, and of course this is a negative 12, but let's just think of this as 12 for a second. And eight is the same thing as four times two. I'm like, oh, okay, here I can cross cancel fours. I'm left with three over two, and of course this is a negative. So our final answer is negative three halves. All right, now some of you might be saying, come on, Mr. U2 math man, you know, you take such a long time to explain this. Well, listen, okay. Here's the deal. I've been, uh, you know, teaching this stuff for many, many, many years, many decades. I've made all the mistakes. And here is the thing. If you truly want to learn mathematics, you must have patience. You must have focus. You must learn how to do one problem nice and slow and really understand all the steps. And once you have this down, even if you take one problem and it takes you a long time, as long as you're, okay, I get this, I get this, I get this. Once you understand that one, one prompt, okay? You could take that prompt and you can continue to practice other prompts and you'll get faster and better, okay? So when I'm teaching, I like to explain things nice and slow and, you know, where it's easy to understand for all people, uh, irrespective of their skill sets. Because if you can understand one prompt, really, you know, all the things that are going on, it's just gonna make you much, much better. But here is the bottom line. If you want to get better at math, you must practice on your own, all right? So not enough just to watch a video, but like, oh, I get that. Um, you know, for it to be your skill, you have to practice it. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.